Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, which is actually right here in Westboro. There are like actually 20 of us here. Um, but this is not about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary, whose goal in life is very simple. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Westboro, that means right here. They don't want to move to San Diego with their kids. They don't want to go to Marlboro with their friends. They like it right here. So the point is, if you're like Frank and Mary, who do you need to know? And what do you need to know about? What programs, what things in order to live a happy remaining life right here in Westboro? So um, a few people know me. Everybody seems to know my friend Shelby Marshall, a, a veteran, a veteran on the, on the Board of Selectmen now, who's been serving in her um, second term, uh, who brings on these great guests. And this time she even brought on the competition. She brought on uh, a, a, a new person to the Board of Selectmen. And we're gonna, so we're going to talk to him about kind of what's, what he wants to do. So Shelby, whom do we have on today? Yeah, hi, Arthur. It's great to see you. And I'm excited that um, uh, Patrick Welch, uh, who is now a member of the select board, as you mentioned, um, has agreed to join us. Uh, Patrick um, uh, won the most recent election um, for a one-year term. Typically, our terms are three years, but Patrick um, bravely stepped up to fill in some really big shoes of a little person, a lot of tenure in this town, Lee Emery. And so... Um, Patrick is no stranger to Westboro. He's been uh, here all of his life, it seems. Uh, he'll give us a brief intro. And then Arthur, we've agreed to give it, make this be a little spicy and be a hardball interview. We don't usually do this on Frank and Mary, but only for Patrick. That's right. That's right. So I'm supposed to ask these really tough questions and you're supposed to say, oh, Arthur, come on, ease up a little bit. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, Patrick, yeah. Patrick, tell yeah. us about you. Yeah, tell us about you. I know that you've just, you know, tired of doing this because you just ran for selection. So you had to go do this a thousand times. But that said, kind of how did you get how did you get here? Why did you why are you doing this? You know, all, all of all of that. Yeah, well, first of all, certainly thank you uh, for having me on the show. It's a great opportunity to to talk to y'all and, uh, you know, uh, get out there in the community. So, um, yeah, longtime resident Shelby indicated uh, of Westboro. I've lived here for just just hit 38 years. Uh, graduated at Westboro High School. Uh, my three children went through the high school. Uh, I have a large amount of relations in town. As a matter of fact, my, my in-laws are, are Frank and Mary. Um, uh, they, they actually, board, their house borders on uh, one of the graveyards in town. And I always joke to them that they might, uh, you know, might consider just we'll put them down in the backyard. So, so it, is their back, the, it is their backyard. That's, it is their backyard. That's yep. a great We're going to have a show on that to determine if that's allowed by zoning or whatever, but that's a different <laughs> show. There you go. There you go. Um, so yeah, I, I, um, I've worked for, uh, let's see, uh, when I first moved to Westboro, I worked for a number of different small businesses, uh, including at the, uh, uh, at, uh, the Willows of Westboro for a number of years. Uh, then worked for a couple of other small companies in town and eventually ended up working for EMC for my first 16 years or so. And then with the acquisition of EMC by Dell, I'm now a, a Dell employee. Uh, and my role in that company is a nice fit, I think, into our town um, because I deal a lot with policies, procedures. Uh, I'm a program manager by trade, so I work a lot on projects. I work a lot on cross matrix teams and um, a lot of challenging things that we deal with in the private sector, I think do translate nicely over into the public sector. Um, I'll also mention I have a couple of grandchildren now, two granddaughters uh, who live in the area. Um, and you know, I ran uh, for a couple of reasons, but I think the primary reason as I was talking to my wife about running was really that there was an opportunity for me to provide some uh, positive influence in our community, um, to bring a perspective, I think, um, that bridges a lot of different, uh, I'll say age gap, you know, age differences, uh, a lot of different ethnicities. Uh, I mentor a, a family here in town, uh, a minority family here in town. So I, 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 I have a lot of connections with the community and so does my wife. And it was a really good opportunity for me, I think, to get out there. And the time was right. I, uh, uh, I, I'm at the point in my career where I can give more back to the community. Um, and, and this was a really great opportunity to do that. And so for a lot of those voters, this may be the first time that they really saw you without a mask. Oh, yeah. This is like, this is a big deal. Oh my God, we elected him, right? <laughs> <laughs> now they know who I am. <laughs> I, know. I, I know him. <laughs> I'm in trouble That's now. That's the guy. <laughs> so, 
Patrick, one of the things that uh, I think it's really important, uh, and I know we, we talk about this, um, we talked about it, you know, when you consider running is how important, you sort of touched on this, how important it is that people in the community step up. Um, but if you could, you know, first impressions, you know, um, this is a tell-all kind of show. People want juicy stuff. So, uh, <laughs> no, but what's your first impression? What has it been like to, you know, be a selectman? Um, you know, uh, and how does that translate as you think, as you talk with people in the community and they consider, I thought about joining a committee or running for office, but what's it really like? So, especially talk about Shelby. I mean, you know, the real story, I, I don't know the real, I've never seen the back of Shelby, only the front of Shelby, you know. You won't <laughs> use names, I'll just point, okay? How's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, yeah, no, it's, um, it, it's definitely been a very interesting, uh, uh, curve here for me to learn, right? So um, fairly long time participant in annual town meeting and, and, and certainly have listened in to a number of different boards over the years and tried to participate where I, where I could. Um, I think one of the things that I, I, really a couple of big takeaways that I learned was um, the amount of work that both the town and the residents do, and just thinking about it, it's almost a 50-50 split from my vantage point uh, between town departments and uh, volunteers from the community that are really, really running this town and making really positive change for our community. So it's great to see those connections, but I would encourage people to certainly get out and get involved because, um, and get involved early. Um, you know, I, I, in the beginning, when I was attending town meeting, I would, I would join, I would hear an issue, I'd see the warrant probably for the first time at town meeting. And, you know, of course, you have 100 questions about every article that comes up. That's good. But the best thing to do is really to get involved earlier so you can understand what the thought process was to get to that art, that point of the article, the way it was being presented to the town. Um, so that's been a, a, a really tremendous learning curve as to how to do that. Uh, I would say the other thing is really building those relationships. Um, for those that aren't familiar with open meeting laws, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, and I'll just give you a little bit of a personal anecdote. I work with a gentleman whose wife actually ran, ran for US State Senate um, in Congress. and um, I, I talked to him, he's from another state, and I talked to him about our, our form of politics here, our, our form of government. And he was absolutely amazed by the way we operate the town and what it meant to be a select board member and how we, we work together as one executive board to make uh, the changes that we need in the community. So those are kind of my, my I think my, my biggest observations. Um, so get involved, uh, get involved early and uh, be passionate and persistent on things that are important to you. That's a good uh, sign. Yeah, and, and I will say sometimes um, I see the gift of open meeting laws, right? They understand the, at least I try to understand the intent of the transparency of it, um, but man, sometimes is it frustrating, right? Because um, particularly when you, I mean, it's, it's hard sometimes to present in public, right? Um, and you have just a moment, sometimes I'm long on the word, uh, and, you know, you can't really build consensus outside of the meeting because you don't, you know, you can build it with one person maybe, but you can't build it with a quorum. So it's a, it's a very interesting dynamic. Um, and, you know, we have, we have a lot of authority in town, right, as, as the highest executive office, but we don't have all the authority. Right. And I don't know if Patrick, you've found situations where, you know, there's, there, there is this tension there um, that exists. And, it, and, and that's why I think, you know, good relationships really matter and carry forth. Um, but yeah. it's not always easy. Yeah, I would say, you know, I, 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 between boards, I've been really impressed with the level of communication between the boards. Um, obviously, only been in, in, in this position for a few months. But from what I've seen, and I've only sat in as a liaison in a couple of other board meetings so far, but I find the the conversation to be good, positive, uh, constructive conversations between the boards and um, in the time of COVID, I mean that's that's just so important that we that we operate as a well-functioning um, you know town governing body. Um, so I am encouraged by that. And, and just another thought on what you're talking about there, Shelby. I don't think I've come out of a select board meeting yet thinking that I didn't miss saying something like you know. Every meeting I say, you know, I, I should have said that a different way, or I, I, I should have said that, uh, you know, I forgot to say this thing. Um, so I, I'm certainly learning that in my preparation. I think one of the other observations, I, I, Shelby, I, I know you're familiar with this, but uh, 
the, the volume of work and, and content that uh, we get presented on a biweekly basis, uh, the packet of information, I think the smallest one I've seen so far was just around 100 pages, but it was upwards of over 600 pages of, of content. Uh, and that's not that you have to read every, every, every word of it, but it's still a lot of information to parse through and come away with some intelligent um, you know, insight or questions about so that you can get answers that are meaningful to the community. So, so, I'll, so let me just it kind of interject as a once again as a as a kind of an outsider. I remember, but I remember we were doing shows on kind of a variety of things because we've really tried to make the show one, which while it, it is reaching out specifically to seniors, and I think that you know the kudos to Westboro Cable because they do a great job as a result of this show in in some ways, or as a result of the other things they do of keeping a, a seniors who may not have a lot of high tech skills easily informed and in, in uh, about and involved in the community. But but so we, we kind of were doing a number of, and I knew that West was doing a number of different things. And we had the Matt Prison from the master plan on and we had a number of folks and then came COVID, bang, you know? And it was literally like somebody, you know, turned off a switch. I kind of described that. To, I, I feel like we were all going along and all of a sudden the switch went off and everybody's like, oh my God, it's dark. And, and like, and then all of a sudden, like a week ago, the switch went back on, you know, it was supposed to be this gradual thing, but then all of a sudden, boom, you know, so, so in, in this, now you've been elected and everybody now knows what you look like. And, and so, so what are you thinking? What, is, from your own perspective, I know that you you know, you obviously need to be, you're, you're not inevitably going to say, oh, I have a lot to learn and blah, blah, blah. And I get that. But in it, but what what are you thinking going forward? You 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 know you're you're one of those people who's who's obviously been paying attention. So what what things do you think say over the next year are going to be really important things, or over the next couple of years? You know. Sure, sure. So I came into the position. Um, you know, it was a long consideration. Do I do I go for the three year term or do I go for the one year term? And and I really decided to go with the one year term because I know it's a very large commitment. I obviously have my own personal commitments as well. So it was really an opportunity for me, uh, if elected to get involved, um, try to make that positive change to the community. And as such, I really look at the, I'll say the opportunities that I'm looking at in a one year term aren't super grandiose, but they're nonetheless very meaningful to the town. So a great example of that, you know, a, a couple of, of, of things that, um, you know, that I that I think about And one in particular, I'll say is an overall theme to how I think of my position. And that is one of uh, a fostering respect and equity across our town and, and all the things that we do, whether it be policy, whether it be votes on particular issues that we're dealing with. Um, so that's a really key theme to, you know, just my style of how I'm going to operate. But um, it, on the board at our retreat uh, back in March, uh, I took the goal of uh, going through all of the town policies, uh, sp this board town policies. Um, so specifically right now, I'm going through um, around a dozen to 20 different policies, uh, working with the town manager and, and others as appropriate to start to, to start to rebuild those. And we are actually planning on bringing a number of those policies to uh, the next board meeting specifically our flag policy, uh, because we've had some requests on, uh, on uh, hoisting flags in town, as well as the, uh, the, the, the rotary signs. And then another one that is particularly um, of something that I'm interested in to me is uh, the vehicle purchasing pro uh, policy. If you're not aware, uh, uh, the topic came up a few uh, a month or so ago around hybrid vehicles and the requirement for us to comply to the Green Communities Act. So that's something that is, uh, you know, that's really, um, something that I'm interested in and working on. Um, and then, and, and that dovetails into Sustainable Westboro, which is another uh, board that I am participating on and we're working on reconstructing that board right now. Uh, Pete Dumbeck has been leading an effort uh, between the CAP and Sustainable Westboro. Those are being merged and uh, uh, he has actually just reached out to the community uh, to, to ask for volunteers and for people who wanna serve on, on the nine person board uh, for sustainability. So I encourage anybody who has interest in solar, electric, um, whatever it may be in the sustainability uh, realm, uh, please get involved. We, we need help in that space. And there's a lot of great work to be done there and some exciting technology to get involved with. And then finally, knowing that this is to the senior, you know, the primary audience for this is for the senior community. Uh, I am also the liaison to the Council on Aging. 
Uh, and I met with Alma DeMarsh uh, down at the Senior Center a couple of weeks ago and learned about all the great things that have been going on. And to your point about coming out of COVID, uh, um, she had mentioned to me that several of uh, the seniors had uh, recently been able to get together for a knitting session, and it was just a breath of fresh air to them to be able to get back out and get together, and, and it's great news. And I'm really looking forward to getting involved with that, uh, especially since I have a history of working at the Willows, and my wife was a 23-year uh, employee at the Willows. Uh, so I, I, um, I really uh, do enjoy working with the uh, senior community. And I guess one interesting thing that Shelby that I've, and then I'll stop because as you know, I'm supposed to be watching you grill him. But what, what interesting thing that occurred to me as he was describing that is that is it, it, the, it's, it's relatively rare to have somebody coming into one of these positions who has such a strong background in simply organization and, the, you know, and structures as opposed to people like me you know, who have, you know, what I think are great ideas, but I don't, but, but being able to actually figure out how, you know, small to medium to large bureaucratic structures can cause those things to happen is, is, a, is a, just a huge challenge. And the notion of having somebody who is, at, who is actually interested, I shouldn't say actually, that sounds scary, who is interested in, 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 the ways in which those things can really be done well is really a terrific, a terrific asset. Yeah, and it's definitely something, you know, coming from the private sector, you know, I uh, was running fairly large teams, global teams on projects and had a lot of discretion on how we operated as a team, right? That's very different than how we function as a town. Um, we as a board are an executive branch. We, we oversee, um, you know, the town manager and uh, we, we uh, expect that the town manager is uh, driving the operations of the town. So that's, that's an interesting dynamic for me and I've been working through that. So that's one of those areas I'll just share with the community is that that's been a learning curve for me. And having not served on a, uh, on a board before, a public board before, this was uh, definitely a little bit of a, a challenge for me to work through. But I will say that I have, uh, I, you know, established and will continue to establish uh, uh, great relationships across, you know, the town manager's offices, as well as the rest of the board and the other boards in the town. Yeah, you know, um, I think that that is, that's probably one of the most challenging aspects um, that I've found. And that is, I think anyone who runs for this type of office, um, you know, we, we want to sort of innately problem solvers, right? We want to be solving the problem and uh, probably a little bit type A mixed in there too, right? So it's a challenge to kind of um, um, build a coalition, if you will, to um, uh, get the okay, if you will, get the support of the board uh, to move forward um, or to work, not, to, not that the working with the town manager is difficult in the office, it's just, it, it's a very interesting dynamic. I'm having difficulty explaining it, um, but it's, you know, you're sort of like, here's my idea and you sort of run with it. And, and then, you know, you're, we have, Patrick, I know you do. I have constant exchanges with our town manager and other um, department heads as, as appropriate. But it is this very sort of hands off. I mean, we are a board; we're not town employees. And um, sometimes I have to <laughs> wake myself up. And I've had a little bit of hand slapping too in four years, where it's like, you know, it's not your role. But you know, you learn, and you know, hopefully, we don't make the same mistake twice. So yeah, and I'll just I'll just point out. I I, I think uh, just for the record here, uh, our town manager is uh, fantastic to work with. Her office has been a pleasure to work with. So. Uh, very responsive to my questions, uh, even though sometimes they might seem very uh, fundamental. Um, she's she's been a, a pleasure to work with. Um, so uh, you know, it's uh, yeah. Well, I'll just say it's an interesting dynamic. But I encourage people to get involved. It, it stretches my um, skill set, right? It's it stretches my um, uh, comfort level, right? And that that to me is a good challenge. Um, and you know. There was a discussion at last night's board meeting about a particular vote, and I came into this saying that there is a good chance that every vote I take, I could 50% of the town could not be happy with me, right? So I just came into that with that approach. 
I've had a number of different family members over the years who have been uh, either on the, on the select board or on the, the uh, school committee uh, over the last 50, 60 years in town um, and got a lot of, uh, for, the, for those that are still around, I've gotten advice from them. Um, so, it, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's exciting. I'll, I'll just say that. And I would encourage anybody to get involved. So Patrick, what do you think, um, you know, top two to three challenges that Westboro faces? Um, what, you know, whether it's before the board, I'm just saying across the board, what are the challenges that we are looking at? Um, and I'm not asking for a solution, just what are the challenges? Sure, sure. Uh, you know, I said this when I was running for, for the office and, and I think it still holds true now is, uh, is coming out of COVID. It, it's great that the flip, the, the switches, as Arthur said earlier, got flipped. Um, and I'm hopeful that uh, we all stay healthy and, and whatnot. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of variables there. So the health side of it is certainly a concern. I'm a little anxious over this fall as to, you know, kids start returning back to school and uh, the weather changes and all of those things. So, but I do, I am encouraged by the way the town has handled the last year or so in, in our response to COVID. But the other side of that dynamic on COVID is really around the businesses in town. And, you know, we know that there's a, a, a pretty big shift in the way the tax base has been set in town over the last few years as a result of businesses and homeowners and whatnot. And uh, I, I am worried about office space. I am worried about businesses in town surviving. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we as a town through the EDC and other capabilities that we can provide some relief there. Uh, certainly the various different grants and acts that the you know, federal and state governments are providing us uh, with money. Um, we need to use those things wisely, and I, I'm excited about the opportunity to be involved in those discussions. Um, it, you know, but it, and, and I'm also encouraged with the fact that you know, sitting on the last five or six board meetings, we have had a number of different business opportunities that have presented themselves to the town. So it's great to see uh, large and small businesses. I mean, Westboro Pizza under new ownership that was great news. You know, there's. Just, just some great things happening in town, whether it be the potential of the hospital up on uh, 495 and Route 9, or whether it's the new building at 4400. Uh, these are, are unbelievable. It's, you know, there are a lot of towns out there that I suspect are struggling a little more than we are. So it's good that we are in a position we are, and, and that really, uh, I think, is a testament to um, the professionalism of the town and how we've prepared ourselves. I think the other thing that, uh, and I know we shared this view because we've talked about it is, um, and you mentioned it is one of you, what you bring to the, to, uh, your position is um, equity, diversification, inclusion. Um, I think that that's certainly every board, I don't care where you are in the United States is somehow the work that we're, you know, a board is doing involves that, whether it's access to services, or equity in services and delivery of service models. So um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm sure you certainly agree there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just for folks that don't know me, uh, uh, just a little bit more, more of my background so I can give you my why I have the perspective on equity that I do. Um, uh, so being an army brat, I lived all around the world. I moved about every average of every two, two and a half years or so. Uh, and predominantly before I moved to Westboro, I was a minority in every place I lived. Um, and particularly in the South, my school, I think was 60% um, uh, black, maybe 40% white. I moved to Westboro in 83 and I, I, there might've been two or three black you know, uh, students in the entire school. Uh, so very different now. Watched the senior parade the other day, was down there in front of the library. And um, you know, it was fantastic, first of all, to see all the smiles uh, and all the you know, encouragement of the community for you know, cheering on our seniors, um, but also really encouraging to see that diversity in our community. I work in a business where Dell is an extremely diverse company um, and there's just a ton of respect all around the company for no matter who it is, right? So I hope to exude that through our community. And I do know, you know, one of the challenges I think of our, of our minor, minor, minority communities is, um, is perhaps the feeling of um, not being able to get involved or uh, not being uh, as receptive as perhaps uh, a majority, right? We need to make people in our community, regardless of their race, creed, color, whatever it is, accepted in our community. So I'm a big supporter of that. And in every effort, I even mentioned it the other night, uh, last night in the board meeting, we need to, at every opportunity, make sure that we provide services that are uh, equitable and meaningful to the entire community. 
And, and once again, I think that you bring you bring some, a real perspective to that in because of your knowledge of systems. I, I and I and I will say, so I do I do these shows in all the communities where I do quite a bit of elder law. And so we just interviewed in Nantucket the newly hired divest, uh, diversity in, in inclusion officer for the community who is trying to once again trying to do what you're what you're just doing what you're really doing. Now, at the end of these shows, Patrick, uh, what, I, what I try to do is always leave a couple of minutes for Shelby to, tell, to talk to the folks out there about what is going on kind of in the near term over the next couple of weeks, especially from the selectmen's perspective. But now I got two selectmen, so I, I realize I have to budget a little more time for this. So could the, could the two of you kind of give, these, give folks a, just, a, just a sense kind of what's happening over the next few weeks? Yeah, so well, I think, um, you know, as Patrick mentioned, importantly, I mean, people might yawn when they hear policies, but policies really shape, you know, how people do business, how they live their lives, how they interact with the town, how they interact with businesses. So uh, the board will be hearing from um, uh, Patrick and the town manager as to some policy changes and recommendations. Um, we um, continue to... Um, uh, Christy, actually, our town manager and I are working on bringing forward uh, guest speakers to talk about alternatives from, for mosquito spraying that are a little more ecologically friendly. So not we don't have those speakers lined up, but anticipate that will be part of uh, certainly a board meeting. And um, um, I, I would, uh, Patrick, I don't know if you have anything to add. I do want to just, Arthur, talk about some upcoming shows. But Patrick, anything else off the top of your head that will be coming forward? Uh, no, cover the policies and sustainability and, you know, the, the move to get that into a more formal uh, sustainability committee. Uh, that's really important. That's, that's a very aggressive schedule over the next couple of weeks to form that committee. So I'll just repeat it again. Please do uh, reach out to Pete Dumbeck or the town uh, manager's office through Seal of Door uh, and, uh, you know, get involved. So um, as uh, Arthur, you wrap up the show and, and our friend Aiden behind the scenes does so, we'll post the contact information if folks have any ideas for shows, we'd love to hear them. You know, we're, we want the show to be meaningful to everyone out there. Um, well, Arthur and I are gonna kind of figure out the summer schedule. We are gonna be working through the summer, bringing you new content. And I've got, uh, we've got a number of um, great um, guest speakers that are scheduled to come on. We will have Sean, um, Keo, who is uh, another new selectman on at a future meeting over the summer. So it'd be interesting to hear from him. Um, there's a new little free pantry that is open up to offer um, non-perishable goods and other kind of healthcare supplies to folks. So we're gonna have the uh, organizers of that on. And actually our friend Alma Demanche will be on as well to talk about what's going on as the senior center is opening. and. I know for one, my mother-in-law is so excited. I mean, she practically skipped out the door today to, uh, and she doesn't skip very well, love her as I do, but uh, um, uh, she practically break, skipped out. a lot of Frank and Mary's here. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, she did to, to go to um, lunch and, and to be with her friends. So it's, you know, it's so nice to see that switch flipped. Martha, I'll turn it back to you. So thank you so much to the both of you. Patrick, I think it's great that you ran, you know, it'll be, I, I, I think you can, it, both for you and the town to have this experience during this year and, 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 and see if at the end of that year, you're like, oh, this was terrible, or, you, know, ver, you know, versus, well, this is pretty interesting, you know, maybe I should do this. So it's not often that you get to actually, you know, get a, a test run at one of these, right? As yeah. opposed to having three years and then the last two of them, you're like going, oh my God. So, so <laughs> That's really exciting. Th thank you so much for, for coming on. Shelby, this is always wonderful. You know, we really enjoy this. And folks, this is, this is exactly the reason why this show is here, so that you can have a clear sense of who these people are, you know, in, in, a, in a context <clears throat> which isn't open meeting controlled and we, we don't have to do all the procedural. So, so I hope that you, you enjoy this. And I really appreciate Shelby's efforts to really get a variety of folks on so that you can get a sense of the of the the groups you want to be involved in, I think Patrick's point is well taken. This is a very involved community. People are really involved here, and that's the reason why the community works. So to get a sense of you know who 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 these people are, what the organizations are, what you want to know, and why you want to be involved is terrific. So anyway, thank you very much to to Shelby. Thank you, Patrick, and folks. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much.